something you can see.
government officials say they have warned teachers away from party politics and told them to teach students to understand the role of the armed forces and took power last September. Officials say that last year's events began with a fight between students and local people and resulted in few casualties. Western diplomats say the military crackdown on dissent that followed left at least 1,000 demonstrators dead. They say thousands of Myanmar's opposition figures are still being detained. A general strike in India is causing some disruption in major cities, but generally, correspondents say a holiday atmosphere is prevailing. Widespread violence was feared, but there have been only three incidents reported, with three deaths so far. Two people were killed in the southern town of Trivandrum and Kerala State, and one person in the remote northeastern Tripura State. Police said the deaths were the result of clashes between supporters and opponents of the strike, which was called by the opposition to demand the resignation of Prime Minister Gandhi over corruption allegations. Attendance of government offices was higher than normal after the cancellation of leave and warnings that staff participation on the strike could have serious consequences. Reuters news agency says a government effort to render the strike ineffective with thousands of detentions and a massive police presence has persuaded most people not to join in. The strike is having its greatest effect in areas controlled by the opposition, such as Calcutta and New Delhi. However, Bombay appears unaffected, and India's rail system has been disrupted in some areas. China is to boost the powers of its tens of thousands of so-called neighborhood committees in an apparent bid to increase political control over city and town dwellers. Beijing newspapers said the new duties of the committees, which are located in almost every residential street, will be to promote knowledge of laws and policies and to encourage people to follow the government political line. The People's Daily said the committee would also be responsible for meetings of all adults in their neighborhoods. Reuters news agency says China's vast network of neighborhood committees was established in the 1950s and charged with inspecting public hygiene, watching for lawbreakers, and enforcing uh, birth control. The Philippines military has detained an army prison guard for alleged laxity that led to the deaths of an Australian woman missionary and 20 other people in a hostage drama two weeks ago. A military official, Major Wilfredo Garcia, said Constable Antonio Alcazar, chief guard on duty when prisoners took control of the prison, is in detention undergoing investigation. A Senate investigating team in a report last week said the prisoners succeeded in taking the hostages by tricking Constable Alcazar into leaving his post, allowing them to take rifles, including his own. The officer in charge of the jail, Captain Poglio Gildo, has also been removed from his command. However, Major Garcia says this is part of a routine army reshuffle and not as a result of negligence during the three-day siege. Japan has issued an expulsion order to a Chinese national who tried to slip into the country in May with 107 Vietnamese refugees. Immigration officials said Zhu Yiming told them that he was from Fujian province and was trying to get a job in Japan. They said four other Chinese who tried to enter Japan on the same boat were still under investigation, but Japan would accept them if they proved themselves to be genuine refugees. So far, immigration officials have detected 85 Chinese amongst the Vietnamese boat people who have reached Japan. The United Nations terms genuine refugees as people who leave their homeland for political and not economic reasons. And to end the world news, from Radio Australia, the main points again. In a last-minute change of mind, Papua New Guinea has declined to sign a fishing agreement with the Soviet Union. 
an outbreak of cholera at a Vietnamese refugee camp in Hong Kong, and Australia tightens the criteria for overseas students wishing to study English in a move to help clear the backlog of applications from China. And that ends the world news. There will be a new summary before international report in 50 minutes. The time now on Radio Australia is 13.10 UTC, and now Australian news. Western Australia's Premier, Mr Dowding, says he won't take action over the allegation that the Bond Corporation used political intimidation to improve its position in talks over a petrochemical project. Mr Dowding says he's received legal advice, which concludes that no action can be taken on the threat made during commercial negotiation. However, the state opposition leader, Mr McKinnon, says the allegations are serious and has referred them to the state's new anti-corruption commission. Mr. Dowding had earlier told Parliament that Bond had demanded the government buy certain property assets at inflated values and had initiated talks with senior Liberals on the prospect of blocking money supply and forcing fresh elections. The Prime Minister has appealed again for domestic airline pilots to return to the centralised wage-fixing system, saying there's room for significant pay increases. Mr Hawke said the pilots needed to recognise that they were not uniquely different from other Australians. He rejected opposition claims that he had used a confrontationalist approach to inflame the pay dispute, which has led to a mass resignation of pilots employed by Australia's main domestic airlines. Meanwhile, the Confederation of Australian Industry has asked the Industrial Relations Commission to take strong action over the pilot's dispute. The Confederation said the damage done to industry by the lack of air services was beyond measure. The Tourism Minister, Mr Holding, told Parliament that the industry was examining legal action with major hotels faced with putting off permanent as well as casual staff. Australia is seeking to expand its food processing industry with particular attention to markets in Asia. A booklet released by the Australian Trade Commission, Austrade, forecasts tremendous demand in Asia for processed food over the next decade. The Department of Industry, Trade and Commerce says the nation's trade deficit could be helped by more food processing in Australia to satisfy the Asian markets. The Austrade booklet says Australia is a logical base for food processing companies planning to expand in Asia because of its high quality, production free and competitively priced raw materials. And that ends this news from Radio Australia.
It's 1315 Universal Time on Radio Australia. Brian Duncan here, signing up for my final hour this evening, Wednesday, the 30th of August. Last day of August, part one. First of September on Friday. Uh, we uh, we have music ahead of sport at 